Pat Monahan from Train. What up, buddy? How are you? Good. <laughs> How are you guys? Pretty good. So I love your background, by the way, with the Christmas lights and stuff laid out there by the uh, sound panels. Yeah. I'm in my little studio. It's uh, across the street from my house. That's awesome. And it looks like a crack house because I have the windows blocked out and no children ever trick or treat here. <laughs> Nobody goes to that house. That's where that singer works. We don't go near that. Yeah, but you've got the good candy, I'm sure, in that house. Nothing happens in this house, actually, <laughs> except, except for this. This is How it. great, though, that going to work for you is literally like right across the street into the studio. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a pretty good life after all these years. Yeah. Do you look back, I mean, how long ago Drops of Jupiter is what? Like 20, 25 years ago or something? 20, yeah. It was 20 in uh, last year. So when you look back at that, I mean, because you say it's a pretty good life. And yeah, I've lived a pretty good life too. And you and I are about the same age. And happy birthday, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, it was fun. It was nice to see that. Um, you look back and go, man, is, is this how you planned it? Is this how you thought it would go? Well, uh, when I'm looking at the panels here on Zoom and I see uh, John and Jill and I'm like, wow, we're like peers. And then I look up at my corner and I see my face. I'm like, OK, this has been a while. I've been doing this a while. <laughs> Notice how he, he doesn't say anything about my face either, because he sees basically the same face looking back at him when he looks at my face. You know, you and I share the face. Oh, we share that face. But this face is a roadmap to a life well lived. Yep, that's right. That's exactly what it is. Let's talk about the new song, AM Gold, which is out. I thought that was kind of funny, too, because such a great song, so empowering. Thanks. But yet, I don't know if John, John's 27, the new guy on our show, if John really understands, so you have to tell him what AM Gold really means. So my, my wife's name is Amber, <clears throat> and her last name is Monahan. And so my daughter just yesterday said, was that about mom? And I was like, no, it's, it's about actually... Uh, self-empowerment but she's like well what does even am gold mean and i had to explain back in the day uh there was am radio and she was like what i don't <laughs> even want to hear anything about this is kind of a new term for me too <laughs> and so am radio was a mono radio system that was not in stereo yet and uh so when there were these huge hit songs that were selling millions of copies, they put them in a compilation called AM Gold Records. And this record that we were making was such a throwback to yeah. that era that my manager was like, this sounds like an AM Gold record. And I was like, wow, that's a great title. And then I wrote the song AM Gold last. That was the last one that got written because it was like, that should be a song. So uh, it's a very self-empowering song. And, and I've told a few people that you know, I changed a lyric when we were done with it to uh, if they don't love you no more, because I'm surrounded by a different environment now. Uh, mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that consider themselves they, them, and not he, she, and he, and they are, is uh, had to be represented. So you're inclusive in that respect. I get it. Totally. It's funny just to hear you talk about, you know, AM Gold and explain what AM Radio was to John. Yeah, I mean, we have AM stations still, but I don't think it's the same as what it once was. No, because it was a big music thing way back in the day. And that's actually before us, too. Pat and I didn't grow up, you know, that's with right. AM Gold. We grew up with FM radio stations. Right. Yeah, but that's I'm, right. I'm such a dork. I can tell you that AM stands for amplitude modulation and FM is frequency modulation. Never. Never would have known. <laughs> Guys, when See, you get I, on Jeopardy. I, I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I've lost interest. <laughs> uh, there's a big deal going on, Morongo, on Friday with Lisa Fox hosting this. And I guess you guys asked for Lisa Fox in particular because you know she's a wild party animal. I've known Lisa for yeah. so long, and I love her. And she'll drink wine with me and won't make me feel bad about myself. She brought a couple bottles of your wine in for the yeah. interview today. Just Some so are half empty. Some. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, none are in the studio, so what's half empty? I know. She the one she, she has, has out them. in the hall or something? <laughs> She's got a Isn't with it her. funny that uh, wine is so much older than AM radio, but these two know all about that? <laughs> right. <laughs> Very familiar. How is the, the wine company going? That's going really well for you guys, right? Yeah, we've been able to donate uh, an enormous amount of money to Charity House in San Francisco, which yeah. uh, houses very sick kids and their families and Gives them a chance to, uh, you know, let go of the real truth of what it takes to go get better 
and gives yeah. them a, a place to be and have some dignity and uh, get a chance to regroup so they can think about the one thing that's most important. God, I love that you do that, man. When you find ways to to give back when you've had such tremendous success, uh, that's the way to do it. You know, you can't take it with you, right? You got to give back to people. Yeah, well, this one in particular is dear to me because both uh, my younger children, I have two older children, but my two younger ones ended up in uh, the NICU in a children's hospital before. And, mm -hmm. you know, those those situations can get pretty scary and they can go a lot of different ways. So yeah. it, it felt like the right place. So you had that experience and you and I both share this experience then. And I've talked about this before, kind of like the blinders that they would put on horses back in the day and stuff. You've had the experience of having blinders on and the rest of the world has faded away. And the only thing that matters is a healthier child. I've been through that same thing. Yep, that's right. It, it ha happens. Uh, I guess, you know, uh, yesterday was a weird day for me. I, it was my birthday and it kind of started off not great and just kind of got worse as time went on. And, and then a friend of mine, uh, he revealed to me that he, uh, he might be pretty sick. And then it made me realize that my day was just fine. And uh, yeah. I needed... I needed a wake up call because like those situations you just mentioned, yeah. we tend to like when COVID locked us down, I just felt bad for myself the whole time, really not considering the fact that real stuff was happening in people's lives. And I was like, what about me and my record? Uh, and it didn't take long for me to realize how uh, great my life is and mm -hmm. that I just needed to do the work and see if I could be helpful to anybody else. And uh, sometimes those blinders are helpful. Yeah, it's it's so true. And I, I feel like, you know, a lot of people say with age comes wisdom, but I'm encouraged at the same time by like guys like John and, and Jill, who's a little bit older than John, but not quite as old as me, um, having that same realization that, you know, we've got it pretty good. And people in Ukraine are fighting for their country. And all yeah. around the world, there's all these events that are so much heavier than us worrying how long the line at Starbucks is. And we need that yeah. reset. We need to refresh and remember that. And of course, Everybody has problems, and I, I do believe, I don't know if you think this, we're a product of our own reality, you know, and your world is your microcosm. Those are important things, too. They're valid feelings and emotions, but at the same time, it is important to realize there's so much more to this world. Right, but it doesn't discount the fact that that Starbucks line is pissing me off. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. We talk about this all the time, especially the ones where you can't see the line when you're in your car yeah. until you turn the corner. And then and you're stuck. You're, there's nowhere for you to go. And you can't back out, Pat, you know what I mean? So hey, you, where I live, there's a Chick-fil-A. There's one Chick-fil-A within like 50, 100 miles of yeah. anything. There is, you can't get on the freeway because of the cars that are yeah. trying to get drive through Chick-fil-A. No, it's nuts. And Chick-fil-A is great, but it's nuts <laughs> how many certain like restaurants. Oh, they're or one of my sponsors, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand your frustration. I'm wearing a Chick-fil-A sweatshirt right now. I don't know if you noticed our Chick-fil-A studio. So or yeah. <laughs> Man, that's funny. Go ahead, Jill. Sorry. Uh, the first time I was ever pulled over for speeding was when uh, Drops of Jupiter was playing on the radio. And cool. so I was feeling it. I was singing along. I was like I was up in the sky in that spaceship flying by Jupiter. And I got pulled over. So now whenever I hear that song, even now, 20 years later, whoop, whoop. I always think about that like energy and that rush of uh, being yeah, pulled I'm over. I, I didn't get a ticket. Oh, I, I got a warning. But uh, that song always just resonates with me, having that memory. Oh, Pat, thanks. There's no chance <laughs> so to get a ticket. You. Her dad's a retired D3 LAPD detective. But I didn't tell the officer that that time. I would tell everybody. No, I, I was, it was my first time being pulled over. I was so nervous. How fast were you going? Like 56 and a 55? I was going yeah. 70 on the Ooh, freeway. I was I going like seven, it. barely anything over. 70 on the well, freeway is required. 65. Your father would real. He, he would probably tell you, I think they're looking for 15 miles over. That's when they're going to get you. Yeah, well, that's when they really pop you. What was that guy doing then? Well... <laughs> I don't want to say you're a pretty young lady. We'll leave it at that and go from there. You know what's interesting about Drops of Jupiter, too? I, I don't know if you've seen this, but there's a there's a TikTok debate going on right now. This video just went viral this month. It's got like 7 million views. I don't know why 20 years later, but they're debating why you wrote Drops of Jupiter. This girl posted that she thinks you wrote it about a girl asking for space in the relationship. And there are so many comments going back and forth saying that, no, you wrote it after your mother passed. And there's like millions of these views and comments going back and forth on this. So while you have, while we have you here, what was the reason you wrote Drops of Jupiter? 
yeah it was it was right after my mother passed away and uh it was her coming back uh, i dreamt the song and wrote it in 15 minutes but it was her coming back and telling me what it was like out there that you could swim through the planets mm -hmm. You wow. could do whatever you wanted in this different plane and come back with drops of Jupiter in your hair. If that's what, if that's what you wanted, you could have that. Oh, and man. that settles my daughter, yeah. who's also addicted to TikTok because she's 13 <laughs> and she's addicted to this. Oh my God. Uh, she's addicted to those two things. <laughs> oh my God. But she was trying to explain to me the burnout of songs. And I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting because I wouldn't know those things. I've, I've only been in the music industry for 100 years. <laughs> and so she was saying, like, drops of Jupiter, Dad. People still like that song. But, like, hey, soul sister, burn. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No way. Yeah. She's calling and out a like, burn factor in one of your biggest hits. <laughs> I was like, that's super nice. Go do a TikTok. Leave me, oh. leave me out of this. How do you police the time for her with the phone? Because that is a struggle. I have a 13-year-old as well. It's hard because uh, my wife is very into her getting uh, excellent grades. Yeah. And, you know, that's where the, oh, my God, my eye roll comes in. But you have to just, you know, you, you want your kids to be a part of whatever they're going to be a part of. It's a new world of social of course. You know, environment. But yeah, at the same time, you have to get the work done. Yeah, I just get scared because there's so much bullying that goes on with, you know, social networks and group chats and instant messages. And, you know, kids have all these different apps that things disappear, too. And we're not that generation. So we don't know all the tricks and tips that they have. That stuff. I have one kid. That stuff just kind of makes me nervous, you know. I think you have to trust your parenting at some point. Um, oh, God. And, and that has to be that. You have to trust that uh, even though our kids you know, they're going to lie and they're going to want to do things that we did when we were kids. You have right. to trust that uh, underneath they're going to be a little bit like us. Yeah, hopefully. The tour kicks off in Boston. This is coming up on June 8th. Why would you guys choose uh, Boston? Uh, because Boston people are super tough and they'll beat us up if we don't start there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Every every tour starts differently and sometimes it's based on school schedule or sure. weather. I'm really surprised. This is the first time we'll be going into like Texas and Arizona in July. Oh, it's we, usually hot. St we usually start there. Yeah. Because of how hot it gets in the summer. So we'll see how that goes. Right. Oh, my gosh. Well, we will see you Friday night. Oh, I want to congratulate yep. you too. I'm like one of the, I guess, one of the biggest like Hallmark Christmas people. Like, that's our thing. We did a little Lifetime, yeah. to be fair to Lifetime. Did a bit. Not really my thing. More of a Hallmark guy. Because they're you... a sponsor. Well, no, no, because <laughs> yeah, you were on that. Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. The Everything's whole Hallmark like... thing was really fun. Yeah. Did you like doing that? Yeah, it was super fun. They were yeah. really nice. And, you know, we have a, an album called Christmas in Tahoe. So yeah. they uh, they wrote a script based on what they heard in the uh, in the record. And we had such a fun time. They were... Uh, really pleased with yeah. uh, my work and wanted me to do it again. So maybe I'll be the new uh, face of Hallmark. Yeah. Dude, that's so cool. That's I don't, great. I, don't I love that. Will be. <laughs> maybe be, I don't know, something with Hallmark, right? Dallas got a couple yeah. movie Who ideas, knows? you know. Yeah, that's right. Dude, we go in on this. I got a bunch of like Hallmark movie ideas that are so solid. I follow the formula. I'm telling you, they're great. Okay. I mean, I'm not even kidding. Uh, I need some of those. Okay. Let's I go in on it, man. Ideas. Great. Well, I don't know if I'm going to see you this uh, this Friday. No, I got soccer but on maybe Friday. Maybe you could give your list to uh, to Lisa Fox so she can hook me up with the biz. Yeah, like I trust Lisa just to give you a bunch of treatments, dude. Her and her boyfriend Chef Eric will be over to Hallmark tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, man, I love I love the partnership. I know, I know, I know. Pat, this thanks. Is good team play. He it is. To give this to Pat. Hell no. Hell no. I'm going to Hallmark now with my boyfriend. <laughs> Listen, my friend, have fun at Morongo. Thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. Congrats on everything. Yeah, thanks a lot.